Thank you for watching the best barbecue show. Uh, today is a fun day. I'm here with Cade Mercer, uh, the owner, operator, CM Smokehouse here at Bolden Acres. How's it going? Oh, pretty good. How you doing today? I'm good, man. You're a uh, you have a, a long history of barbecue in your life. I mean, did you start? Was that your first job to cook barbecue or what? Um, no. So my first job was as a bus boy when I was 14, and then when I was 15, I got my first cook job um, at a place called Steaks to Go in New Braunfels. Um, that sounds fun. Steaks yeah, to go. Yeah, it was a fun little place. It was like a little bitty building that only had a drive through or you could walk up and order. And the building was just the kitchen and the walk in. And that was it. Um, I got my first barbecue job I'm at uh, Rudy's is where I started my barbecue career at. And uh, and so you have a fun story from there, too. You, you, you watch the guy walk out on his uh, on oh, a, on yeah. a tough day. Yeah, I definitely watched a guy burn 50 plus briskets and then just open the smoker and look at it and then walk out the door. It was insane. He didn't even try to fix it or anything. Nope. He just was like, I'm done. Nope, just bye. Uh, what was it like working at Rudy's? Uh, it was fun. I really liked Rudy's. Um, it was what taught me like the foundations of barbecue kind of and it got me really into it. Nice. Well, for those who don't know, uh, Cade recently came from Waco from Guest Barbecue, mm -hmm. uh, where you know you did all kinds of things. But now you're cooking a really fun menu, more of barbecue. What would you say, like barbecue turned into sandwiches, egg rolls? I mean, you you basically yeah. got this barbecue infused menu you're making. Yeah, basically like a barbecue infused bar, like elevated bar menu is what I would call it myself. I think. Yeah, and you're taking, rather than, you know, you're sitting at a bar, a lot of people don't necessarily want a, a platter, they don't necessarily want to eat, you know, the, they want finger foods, they don't necessarily want to have to deal with, like, slices of brisket and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. It's hard to, it's hard to keep drinking all day after you eat a big, heavy barbecue platter, so we try to keep it a little bit lighter than the barbecue platters and make it fun as well. Now, after Rudy's, I mean, you, you clearly have a culinary background, so... Between Rudy's and now, where where did all that, you know, really chefy stuff come in? So, I mean, well, I went to culinary school, so it started with that. And then I was working around town at uh, some fine dining places during culinary school. And then after... Was it like Rudy's culinary? Like what, what made yeah, you want so to go to I culinary went, school? I went from Rudy's to culinary school. Nice. Um, Rudy is the inspiration for a chef. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I basically was deciding if I wanted to keep working at Rudy's and just try to move up that ladder or if I wanted to progress in the cooking world. And I really wanted to progress in the cooking world whenever that happened. Um, so I just moved to Austin and I wanted to leave barbecue behind, actually, and just stay really? in the fine dining world. Yeah. Interesting. But barbecue pulled me back i mean with lambert's was like the perfect marriage of barbecue and fine dining so i got what i really liked in barbecue and i still got to make nice composed dishes and cook really good steaks and still cook everything over live fire and so at in culinary school were you telling lots of rudy stories or did you kind of like not want to admit you worked there um i think it was a little bit of both i think it started out with me kind of being embarrassed about it but then the further i've progressed in my cooking career the more i think i appreciate rudy's and how they're able to hold that standard through so many restaurants because it's i mean it's consistently good if you walk into any rudy's you know exactly what you're getting yeah and it's not like the i don't know like the tea like there's these little things that are actually still really good about it it's not like it's you know you go to a place and the iced tea or um, some of the sides, like you can see, they kind of half-assed it. They're yeah. like consistent through everything. Oh yeah, everything is always consistent there. Uh, and so, you know, last night you had a nice dinner at Uchi. So mm -hmm. you're you're a big fan of some high culinary art. 
I am. I'm a big fan of eating good. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, you know, are, does that mean you're going to start, you need to have some sort of barbecue item that uh, you like eat upside down. Did they, did they do that? <laughs> Every time I went to Uchi, they're like, you have to, you have to flip this and like yeah. put this on your tongue first. Yeah. The, yeah, the foie nigiri is definitely my favorite bite at Uchi always. Oh, it wow. has been since the first time I ate there back in culinary school. And is that, that's like cooked or? Yeah, it's like seared foie on rice some seaweed wrapped around it it's delicious (laughs) i might i might have to go in there just for that do they do like a bar happy hour or anything Mm -hmm. they have a really good happy hour like half the stuff we ordered last night was off the happy hour menu oh that's amazing yeah so you went to culinary school did you have a, a an idea of where you wanted to go from there or not really i just wanted to i wanted to cook and i wanted to really really learn how to make as much stuff as I could, like right out of culinary school. So I moved back to New Braunfels and was trying to cook there for a little while, but I didn't really like it. And that's when Reed called me and I got hired at Lambert's. Oh, really? So you and Reed met at Lambert's? Yeah. How long ago was that? Um, so we met a year before I got hired at Lambert's because he, I like interviewed and staged and then didn't get hired. And he saved my number and then actually cold called me for <laughs> whenever I was working at a place in New Braunfels. I was like, hey, I don't know if you remember me, but I'm Reed from Lambert's and I really need a barbecue cutter. And I was like, well, I really don't like my job right now. So <laughs> count me in. Yeah. New Braunfels not known for its culinary arts. Yeah. No, not yet. It, I mean, it's growing. It's getting there. Well, I, you know, because you've been here for so long, the food scene in Austin went from nothing to almost unbelievable at this yeah. point. The food scene in Austin is incredible. I love the food here. Well, and, and uh, you know, you are really bringing barbecue to another level because there are places, a lot of places, uh, there's not really a lot in Austin, but you go around the country and there's a lot of places that don't cook good barbecue, but then they turn it into things to try to hide that the barbecue is not good. Yeah. You're taking a really good barbecue and like really turning it into this amazing, that brisket melt sandwich was yeah monstrous it's so good nice i'm glad you liked it big thick texas toast melts in your mouth like the it tastes like a melt i I think we talked about Mm -hmm. it but there's something in there i don't know if it's the onions or what but the it tastes like a melt and it's not it it, that doesn't like take it down it just tastes right and it's got great ingredients in it you know yeah absolutely i mean that's what i try to do is put as much thought into everything as possible to make it all cohesive and go together the last thing I want is just to throw three different meats on a sandwich and call it a sandwich. Like, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, but you also, you know, the like the egg roll that you just put on the menu, uh, the wings, the ribs, like everything has a, a touch to it. You know, you could you could phone in a lot of these things and you just you do them to a T. Like, I mean, it couldn't have been easy to put that stuff in an egg roll and also <laughs> make it like melt apart like that. Yeah. Yeah, it was, was that, it, it was interesting. Was there a lot of uh, was there a lot of uh, experimenting with that? No, I just made the batch and then I had to do some adjustments before we ro- rolled the rest. Do you uh, you just get egg roll wraps or what? Yeah, yeah, you just buy egg roll wraps and then uh, make your mixture and roll them up. That's a uh, I really like. I, I've told I, I don't know if, if they've told you, but I've sent like five or six people here already. Yeah, I've so like. Two of the people have said something about you sending them here. Yeah, and they were both really nice. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, uh, a friend of mine came here and was watching the game and got wings. And then I was talking to her and I was like, oh, you were at my friend's new place. She's like, yeah, the wings were crazy. Like, yeah. They were so good. And they're big. Is that a is that like a special kind of chicken? or No, I just ordered the regular one and two separate. I mean, they're, it, it's a nice product. Like they're jumbo chicken wings. And then nice. we smoke them and then flash fry them. What, I mean, does it get any better? I don't think so. I think that's the best way to make wings, in my opinion. Well, and you do the same thing with the cauliflower too, right? That's, mm-hmm. And that's a, you know, that's a nice bite. There, there's just these nice things in between, also that, uh, you know, that coleslaw that you have. That what did you say? You emulsified the vinegar. Yeah, so it's just a fully emulsified vinaigrette. So it kind of looks like a creamy coleslaw, but it's really a vinegar based. Yeah, and, and so it's and, nice and light. It's got the burned shallots and honey in it. it. Makes it taste good. See, I need. I can't keep track of all these ingredients. You got the whole <laughs> menu. So, 
Yeah. So and and that's that's a lot of a lot of barbecue places are missing that too. Is is those little bites in between that kind of give you a break from it yeah they help cut through all that super fatty richness i mean if you want to keep drinking you gotta have something to cut through it <laughs> so uh so you've known reed guests for a long time you guys worked at lambert's together so mm-hmm. was it from lambert's to guests lambert's to it what was, was next it was after lambert's is when i did east side tavern so um i got a job as the opening chef there and i was there for about a year and a half before i moved to waco Wow. And so that's what, three or four years ago now? Yeah. Well, I was in Waco for almost three years exactly. So like I was like, like a month shy. So yeah, it was like five years ago, four and a half, five years ago. Wow. And it's, it's crazy because Eastside Tavern's uh, still cooking. Um, I mean, Lambert's still going. It's like uh, you get to come back and kind of be part of the scene that you helped kind of grow on your own. Yeah. Yeah, it's it, nice. Is it, uh, you know... You were in Waco for three years. Was it, were you just kind of cooking the whole time? I know it was a lot of work putting that whole restaurant together and you were working on, I mean, guess isn't just one place because you worked on a ramen spot and other stuff too, right? Oh yeah. I mean, there was one time before we went into the restaurants, there was one time when we had four food trucks operating at one time. It was three of them with like, one of them was like the guest family barbecue one. And then there was two that were doing like sandwiches and stuff. And then the ramen truck. And then we went into the two restaurants, and there was still always one food truck, at least, if not two, operating. Wow. And so, do you think, I mean, obviously, this is a little less work at this point, right? <laughs> I mean, to do that? R- right now it is, yeah, but not for long. Yeah, and you, you have a lot of plans for this place, too, right? I do, yeah. Yeah, um, I wanna. we're going to be adding a second food truck here. It's going to be called Gringo Loco, and it's going to be all barbecue-inspired Tex-Mex, kind of. Like, uh, like I, re- I want to do, like, tacos, tortas, and tostadas, and then, like, have eight or nine different protein options that you choose, and I think it'll be really good. If, if everything I have in my head comes out how I want it to, then it should be good. Well, it seems like a lot of it's already coming out, right? I mean, some of it, yeah. Yeah. And... Uh the crowd here, I'm sure, is having a great time with a much better food option here as well, right? Oh yeah, they've been loving it. I've been. It's been nothing but positive feedback since we opened last week. And uh, are there any fan favorites? Do you see anything going out the door more often? I mean, all three kinds of wings have been just flying out the window. Like, I'm selling more cauliflower than I thought I would ever sell in my life Amazing. in a day. Yeah, it's awesome. And then I mean, the. The smokehouse burger and the brisket patty melt are probably the two things flying out the most. Even though I feel like the buffalo turkey sandwich should be and it's not. And it's kind of irritating me right now. It's like people need to know how good that sandwich is because it's like my favorite sandwich. Well, and this is, it's smoked turkey, right? And then you fry it? Yeah, so it's smoked turkey and then we cut it down into like really thick slices. So it's like the size of a chicken breast and then we batter it and fry it and toss it in wing sauce put some ranch and lettuce and pickles and throw it on a brioche bun and call it a day. Yeah. I think I'm going to get one of those today. Yeah, you should. It's really <laughs> good. Uh, and so, you know, uh, I got lucky that you're in, in my neighborhood and just opening. So I know you've been doing a bunch of other media, but is it fun to see, you know, you're already kind of the talk of the town as far as the barbecue world's concerned. It's, it's been really fun so far and I'm hoping that it's only going up from here. Like, I I have a lot of hopes for this place and the kind of and the food I want to put out of here and I think that if it works out then it's going to be really great. Well, and do you see I'm sure you see your Instagram growing. I'm sure you see it. you're getting a lot of interactions, lots of questions and stuff. Oh yeah. Yeah, both my personal and the CM Smokehouse Instagram have both been growing quite a bit in the last week or two. Any fun stories or p- interesting people you've interacted with? Not yet. I haven't had any real off the wall stuff yet. Um just, I mean, people ask asking for advice and stuff, but I don't ever mind that. I'll answer almost any question that gets sent to me like that. Yeah, well, and and that's the thing that Texas is unique because we share. You know, no one, no one's afraid of uh, secrets here. Yeah, we're we're happy to be like, yeah, you want to know how I did this? Ninety nine percent of the time, you'll give all the information where. I feel like, I mean, one of the reasons I call this the best barbecue show is kind of a troll because I want people that 
live in other states, live in other countries where they think barbecue is a secret and barbecue is all these things. Yeah. To realize, no, it can be this really open community, right? Yeah. I mean, there's really no point in keeping it all a secret. Like, why would you not want the barbecue to keep evolving? And the more secrets you keep, the more that hinders other people from helping it evolve. And there's no one person that can make barbecue evolve into whatever it's going to be next. And who even knows what that's going to be? Well, and, and you're taking it to the next level. Are you, uh, are you seeing, like, are you thinking more of a, uh, I mean, do you want to take what you're doing? Obviously, this is just the beginning, but do you see in four or five years maybe doing something more culinary, more high end, or are you really kind of focused on? Yeah, I think so. I think that I it could definitely evolve into something more upscale, but finding different ways to put barbecue into foods that people already associate as like normal foods that barbecue is not in is kind of what I'm aiming for right now. But yeah, I could totally see myself down the line doing something a little bit more upscale. What uh, do you have any ideas? Like what what are the kinds of things that if you had, you know, let's say you want someone was like, hey, I'm going to rent this whole place out. I want you to feed 50 people, uh, you know, and you, you know, you had a full staff, whatever, everything you needed. What, what would be some fun things that you might play with for like a special event? <laughs> I don't know. Um, well, I mean, the possibilities are endless at that point. Like, it's just 50 people. Like, what do they want? Do they want a course out dinner? Do they want because I mean, I could do basically whatever right that's what i always tell people i'm like if they're willing to pay for it i'm willing to do it <laughs> so do you have uh do you have some things like uh you know for special events i've seen people fly salmon in from alaska uh you know I, i've seen some fun stuff at some of these barbecue events yeah are there some kind of holy grail ingredients that you've always wanted to play with well i mean I don't know if I always wanted to because I have played with a lot of these ingredients in the yeah. past. And especially like in Waco, we did a lot of upscale like uh, private dinners and stuff. So we were still using all of our fine dining skills to do those. I mean, we were doing five course tasting menus for people, really? ten, seven course tasting menus. Yeah. Tell me more about that. Um, I mean, it was all really fun. Uh, we would... There was this group of guys that loved getting them, that loved getting those dinners from us. I mean, the main course was always a steak, some kind of steak dish. But then for the appetizer and stuff, it would always play depending on what was in season and what I could get fresh from fish purveyors and stuff that I know around. But I would always drive to Austin to buy all the food for them. Nice, really, all the way here. Yeah, that's crazy. There's no, there's no closer place to Waco. Not that has as good of food as like buying stuff from Central Market and Whole oh. Foods. One more, one more star for Austin. Yeah. All right. So my favorite way to cook a steak is the kind of reverse smoke sear. Me too. Is that is yeah. that how you guys would do it every time? Or yeah. I mean, I would. We would just grill them. Sometimes it depended on either what they had at their house for us to cook with or what we brought with us to cook. But I mean. If it's like a, a ribeye or a New York strip or a filet, I would probably, unless it's like a really big ribeye, like a bone-in, really big bone-in ribeye, I would probably just grill those. But as far as any like tri-tip or like tomahawk ribeyes, stuff like that goes, I would always reverse sear and then, and then for the sear, do it directly in the coals. And so would you, let's say you're grilling, you know, a, a normal ribeye, like an inch thick. Yeah. Would you, would you try to keep it a little lighter or would you just hit it with the heat right away oh i would just hit it with the heat right away yeah for sure and just flip it a lot or are you more of a eh, like four times four times yeah ish get some get those grill marks just mm -hmm. right well i mean the thing is it's not about the grill marks right of course it doesn't matter what the grill marks it matters what's in between the grill marks but i mean the the flip gotta get when that you have what you say? You got to get the the nice sears in between to where you have because if you just have grill marks and then it's gray meat in between, that's not going to taste that good. Yeah, no. You really have to get that sear with the grill marks. That's why I mean, grill marks don't matter at all. They're like smoke rings. Yeah, well, that's why in competition you have to have perfect grill marks. Yeah, that's what I I in, still in competition you have to have perfect smoke rings. Yeah, neither one of them matter. <laughs> I still uh, to this day would love. I still want to go to some SCA competition and bring some like ringers like you 
and just see like who I mean how many spots we can take. Yeah, that'd be fun. I'm always down for stuff like that. I love pushing myself out of my comfort zone. It's well, and, and shout out to the State Cook-Off Association. It's one of the easiest places to, you know, just, it's like $150, $200. Usually they give you the steaks and it, it's a much easier, if you want to do competition, it's a much easier, you know, there's the lower bar to entry than, you know, spending thousands of dollars to go to some big cook-off and having a smoker and all yeah. that stuff. Plus, I mean, competition barbecue is completely different from Texas barbecue. So different. It's more like Kansas City style and stuff. So, yeah. Well, even the Texas-based competitions are still kind of KCBSy. Yeah, yeah. They're all graded on the scale for that kind of barbecue, and it's I don't know. I've never understood that. Have you uh, Have you done any competitions or been part I have of anything? Not. I've never done a barbecue competition. No. So, do you know? You just know from guys like coming in the pit room or what? Yeah. Yeah, and talking to people about it and, I mean, watching all the barbecue competition shows, stuff like that. Yeah, because I've, uh, I've had multiple, I actually, I, I turn down, you know, sometimes they don't have enough judges and they'll be like, hey, if you want, we we'll do this 20 minute orientation and then you can be a judge. And I've turned it down every time because I'm always covering the event or I want to meet people. I don't want to like go eat food. Yeah. And I've been so happy I haven't because some of those home cooks, they have no idea what they're doing. And I've had friends that like, just got burned up by some beans that someone just put like way too much cayenne pepper in or, yeah. you know, you go to taste something, it's, it's one bite, but they try to put so much flavor in that one bite that it'll make you sick. That makes sense. Yeah. That's why, uh, that's why you see all those like over injected briskets and there's like MSG and I mean, it's, it looks like a slice of brisket, but it tastes like, I mean, like a candied apple. I'm good on that. I just need salt and pepper on my brisket. Thank you. Well, and now that you, you've cooked thousands of briskets, you know, you, you've cooked a wide range of food. You, you, you spent so much time in culinary school. Did they, do they really cover smoking or anything? No, not at all. They don't cover barbecue at all in in culinary school. Just knife skills. Yeah. I mean, Uh, it's just, it's just the fundamentals. And that's why if people ask me, like, do you need to go to culinary school to cook? Absolutely not. Like you can gain all that knowledge just by reading and working in the industry. Like, I've definitely learned way more working in the industry than I did in culinary school. Well, and you went to culinary school here? Yeah. What's the school called? Uh, Augusta Scafier School of Culinary Arts up in North Austin. And that's been there for a while? Um, yeah, I believe so. How long did I know, you spend there? Uh, it was like a, it was a year program. Oh, really? Yeah. That's pretty fast. Yeah, it was just for the certificate, not for the degree and certificate. It's a chef certificate? Mm-hmm. It's like a culinary certificate. You got it hanging up in the truck? No. <laughs> I don't even know where it is, actually. Somewhere <laughs> at my parents' house, I'm sure. Uh, I mean, it, it's it's fun. It, it's funny to see because it's like you you have all these skills, but at the same time, like you said, like I bet if someone spent a year here with you, they might have a, a totally different skill set but be just as good as any other chef, you know, Yeah. in a restaurant or that went to culinary school. Yeah, Absolutely. Do you, uh, is that what you're kind of looking for? I know you said you were looking for some, some new people. Are you looking for people who are green or do you want people to have some skills? Is that a little both? Um, I'm okay with both as long as they don't have, as long as the people that have a bunch of skills don't have a bunch of bad habits to go with the skills. Like green people is, it's easier just to teach them stuff because they don't know any better and they don't know any other way. So they're going to always do the way you taught them. Um, which works out good for your place. And it also helps them grow because then once they go get another job, they get more experience and then they can take the good things from the two places and put them together. Nice. And you've got a good crew already. You got Cody out there working right now. Yes. Yes. He's always out there working. How do you know him? Uh, so Cody's my stepbrother. Uh, my mom was married to his dad. Oh, cool. Um, and so, yeah, yeah. And then we've got. I mean, a pretty good crew so far. I've got some morning guys and some guys that I that were line cooks with me back at Lambert's and worked with me at East Side, and now they're here in the mornings. And I've hired a couple of night cooks. I could still use a couple more though. And I mean, if any good resumes ever come in, like I'm always going to interview them to yeah. see. There's always places for good people. Well, and this place has. I don't even know how. Do you know how much seating is here? 
No, a lot though. It's like 200, 300. Oh, like, at least. There's a pickleball court. There's 50 and, TVs. I don't oh, even yeah. know. It's a lot of TVs. You, you <laughs> can see a TV from like every seat in this place. Like, I think it's like 16 or 18 TVs, something crazy like that. And it's cool now, you know, we just we just had some historic snowfall in Austin. Yeah. But you guys have fire pits and... Uh, have fire pits and heaters at every table. Every table's got some kind of heat source at it. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's definitely thought out and it's definitely made to... You know, the bar is huge. Mm-hmm. I think when, when you guys are at the peak, I mean, you just did... This was your first weekend, right? Yeah. So how many bartenders do they have in there? Like five or six? Yeah, there was like five or six on Saturday. And then uh, we closed yesterday because of the snow. Oh, so really? we actually didn't open. Yeah. But that's how I was able to go to Uchi. Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Um, yeah, one, once I was done cooking, I went out to dinner. But uh, yeah, they, the bar is huge. There's a big staff here on the weekends because it's very busy. And it's also very safe as far as COVID goes because all the tables are still, it's all outdoors. All the tables are separated. Yeah. It's, it's really thought out. And how did you guys do with this first weekend? I get, I'm sure you got hit pretty hard with food, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Saturday was busy. And it was the The NFL playoffs. Yeah. It was the NFL playoffs. We were busy from 11 AM until like, 10 30 at night wow. like we and they were i mean we were even cooking till past 10 30 like but i mean we don't close till midnight but we were like busy all day i'm sure that felt good though it did it was awesome <laughs> yeah i mean uh it's like it's the best worst thing right to, yeah oh to yeah just be slammed yeah me and cody both left so happy and so tired saturday night because it was like so fulfilling uh do you uh do you have any like? Do you feel like there was a there was a pretty good response? I mean, have you had because it's a new menu because it's a little different from what people are used to? You find yourself explaining it a lot. Do you have to like, or oh, are people yeah. figuring it out pretty fast? I mean, people are figuring it out, but I've also been explaining it quite a bit. So like, it, anytime we're busy, I'm always running. I always run the food and am standing in front of the truck talking to people. So. It's really easy, like, if they're standing there and they look like they need help, like, I just start talking to them about the menu, and I can usually guide them into what they want to order. Well, and, and as much as reading a menu, you know, can give you information, you because you touch all the food, because Cody touches all the food, talking to you guys is really, it probably elevates the experience also to be like, oh, it's more than just a turkey sandwich. It's more than just... Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. When they come here and they're like, they're like, where's the stuff from the old menu? And we're like, yeah, there's not, none of that's on the menu here anymore. Like it's all new. Um, so then usually at that point is when you have to guide them into what they want to order. Cause they were coming expecting the mediocre food that was here and to get a (laughs) snack and you have to talk them into ordering whatever they wanted. And I'm sure you've got some salesmanship. So you're getting, you're you're probably getting them to throw an extra item on the menu or something. Yeah. Yeah. You got to talk them into the wings with DeAndre. Come on. (laughs) Uh, do you have a, I mean, did you see, did you run out of anything? Like what, what were some highlights of that first busy day? Um, I bet the wings went crazy on we, Saturday. We ran out of Fritos. That was the only thing we ran out of. So I would say, I mean, me and Cody have done this a couple of times. Yeah. It's like we've, we've opened a couple of busy things, so we're getting good at it. But yeah, Fritos was the one thing that we ran out of. That's not bad though. You can get yeah. that anywhere. Yeah, no, we just ran to the gas station and grabbed some real quick and <laughs> good to go. Yeah, the Frito pies kind of took off a little bit more than we expected on the first weekend. And well, and it's not just a, it's not like a normal Frito pie, right? You put brisket on it. Uh, no, so it's actually got pulled pork. So it's got our our chili beans. That it's like a ranch style beans, but they it's like chili powder heavy, so they taste kind of like chili. So it's got our beans on it, and the beans do have brisket in them. But then we top that with pulled pork and salsa verde and pickled onions. Yeah, it's a it's a beautiful dish. Oh yeah, it's great. I know. The one that the one that I made for y'all, that's why the reason why you thought it had brisket on it is because I put brisket on it because of Michael and Candace. That's what they gotcha. would rather have. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I, my first meal here was with Mike Wine and Candace and uh, you are using Flores tortillas. Right? I am. Yes. Any any flour tortilla that goes out of my food truck is a Flores tortilla. You can guarantee yourself that. <laughs> And you're pretty happy with them? Yeah, oh, yeah. They're the best tortilla you'll ever eat. I mean, you've had them. You know. Oh, I've got five sitting in my fridge right now. Yeah. 
<laughs> I keep picking them up. Uh, is it cool to see? I mean, as big as Texas is, it's like a small town because you've got flores, tortillas. You've got, I, I can't imagine how many barbecue people are going to be stopping by over the next few weeks that are that are hearing about it and seeing all the posts. Is it fun to be kind of more in the cut? You know, Waco's nice, but this is like, now you're in the, the heart of yeah. barbecue. Yeah, and that's part of why I ended up choosing to do something here in Austin rather than to do something in New Braunfels was because I really wanted to be back in the cut. I wanted to be back in this larger market and yeah. What what's uh what's like I mean obviously Uchi is probably was high on your list so you did that, you know, right away. But yeah. are there other things you're excited to do while you're back in Austin? Are you going to go to Barton Springs? I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I love Barton Springs, the Greenbelt, Mount Bonnell. I love going out to all those places whenever I'm off to go just check out nature. What else? Um, what else do I like to do? Yeah, what, um, do you, what do you want? Like, you're back in Austin. It's a party again. Yeah, I mean, it was nice to be back with all my friends that I have from here, um, to be able to go out and eat good food all the time. Waco doesn't have that much good food. It's starting to get there. It has some, but just to be able to go eat really nice meals. Like my, my first night back here in town, me and my roommate and one of my friends went to Hestia. That was awesome. That and was Fink and Tavel, the freaking <laughs> super kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. I think the only meal I've had in my life that was better than that Hestia meal was the Noma Mexico meal. Wow. So like that was the Hestia meal was incredible. Did you get to kind of poke your head in the kitchen and see that whole setup? I didn't, no. Um, by the, I mean, I, I was looking at the hearth the whole time we were eating, but yeah. no, I didn't. Yeah, it, I, I just, uh, you know, I want to I wanna elevate the show to the point where they'll let me go in there and <laughs> walk around with cameras yeah. and do some, like, Netflix type stuff. Because that, I mean, that's, uh, who, who knows? What do you think? That's like a $100,000 kitchen or something? Dude, I don't even know. Custom made, those, wood fired. Yeah. And when, I mean, the, those Grills by Demand setups aren't, or I think, yeah, the Grills, grills I'm, by I'm Demand. I'm pretty sure yeah. that's where, who they got it from. Yeah. And I know I had talked to him whenever I first moved to Waco about building us a hearth for the original location of guests. And I mean, his quotes are expensive, so... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the only other really thing, the only other people I know who are doing that are like Grill Works. They got yeah. they're the ones that made the Inferno for uh, for Loro. Yeah, and they're the and I, I'm pretty sure Red Ash has one of theirs also. And the what's that restaurant in the Congress Hotel, the the South Congress Hotel? Oh, uh, second. No. Oh no no, no down here. Yeah, uh, I can't think of the name of it. They, they have, have a hearth. They have they have a wood fire grill that's a oh, Grill okay. Works also. I'll have to go check that out. I had no idea. Yeah. Is that a, you know, would you like to, would you like to have a hearth one day? Yeah. It'd be fun. It'd be fun. Have a brick and mortar with a yeah, giant. With a big old grill. Yeah. But then, but like a hearth in like the, the Hestia looking way and less of like the Salt Lake looking way. <laughs> like right. I don't, I don't need a big grill in the middle of my restaurant like Salt Lake. I need a functional grill in yeah. my restaurant. Yeah. I've always wanted to have. Uh, because the pits and everything, it's just so compelling. You know, like you go to Truth in Houston and they have these giant glass windows. Yeah. You can watch everyone in the pit room. Uh, and you kind of watch people in the pits and in uh, at Rudy's. You know, they have those like warmers. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think people really love seeing, like, even if it's, you know, there's a lot of places that it's kind of fake where they're, you know, they just throw it on a fire or they yeah. throw it on a thing to make it look like that's where they cooked it. But really, yeah. it's just been sitting there right before you eat it. And I mean, putting on the show is cool, but I mean, what, it matters way more what goes on behind the scenes. And I care way less about putting on the show as I do putting, like, putting everything into what goes on behind the scenes. Well, and, and you've been behind the scenes on some really interesting food, you know, even Rudy's. I'm sure just the sheer amount of food you have to make there is oh, crazy. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. It's insane. I mean, I worked at the one in New Braunfels, and New Braunfels is a huge tourist town. So the summers in New Braunfels at that Rudy's were insane. Sweating. Yeah. I mean, cooking and, cooking and or slicing 150 briskets a day sometimes during the summer on the weekends and stuff. Was, and was there much prep, or were you just seasoning, throwing them on the pit? Oh, yeah, just season them, throw them on the pit, yeah. 
So you get probably some really weird looking briskets. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, and that was that long enough. That was before Franklin, right? Was um, that long enough ago? No, Franklin was like just opening up whenever I was working at Rudy's. Okay. But still, like no one. When you first started working there, you ne- you'd never even no one had really thought of like trimming oh, yeah. briskets. Yeah, no, the the new school way of barbecue like that Franklin started still was like starting out at that point. Well, and I have I have kind of a a timeline that I put in my head. So you you've lived it. Maybe you can help me fill it in. But I feel like the first wave of barbecue or the the old school barbecue kind of comes up. It's like where Lockhart kind of stopped like well lockhart's like first wave they're going to keep it real there yeah then second wave was kind of franklin and trimming briskets and aerodynamics and 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 giving a lot more attention to Mm -hmm. the meat and i feel like now we're in this third wave of you know you're taking really good barbecue and then putting it into other dishes there's people that are you know there's smoking beauty up north that's doing vietnamese there's koi barbecue in houston that's doing vietnamese they're even doing thai stuff yeah Uh, you can't leave out all the cool shit that Leroy and Lewis is doing. Right. Leroy and Lewis is like the new new school yeah. where they're I mean they're they're not only uh they're not only making really interesting stuff. They're using really good ingredients. They use Heartland beef, they use um 44 farms, you know, they yeah. they get hogs that they break down. I mean, for you, I'm sure you <laughs> you see that as it's a lot of work working at Leroy yeah. and Lewis. Well, I mean, but it's awesome what they're doing. Like yeah. what they're doing there is incredible, and yeah, and they they uh, I've said it a million times on the show, but brisket barbecue is the cheapest it's ever going to be. Yeah, so go eat it because yeah. Leroy and Lewis is like you you can't you can't believe how much work goes into that shit. Oh yeah, it's no, crazy. It's insane. Is that a I'm, I'm guessing you're, I mean, you're right down the street, so you'll probably be going there pretty often. Oh, yeah. I go there all the time. I love eating there. Yeah. Do, you have a, do you have a favorite thing? Uh, there, that citra hop sausage is probably my favorite thing that they make there. That or the barbacoa. Do they make that sausage regularly? Yeah. It's the one that's always on their menu. Oh, nice. Uh, I love that burger. Oh, yeah. That burger is really good, too. But I just, uh, the bite that that sausage has, I love it. <laughs> uh do you do like a wrap or you just like to break no, it and bite it? it? Well, the, they slice it. And, uh, but do you, uh, like, is that if I was like, Hey, you know, Leroy and Lewis unlimited budget, would you, would you do like sausage and barbacoa or do you, have you tried a, a lot of the I specials? Would, or things I would order, made? I would order a quarter pound of everything in one of each side. Like I always do whenever I go there. <laughs> I just so take you're living your best friends. life is what you're telling yeah. me. I mean, you ha- if you go to, like, there's some places that you just order the menu at. Like, Odd Duck, Barley Swine. You go there, you order the menu. You go to Leroy and Lewis, you order the whole menu. See, it sounds like I need to hang out with you more because I'm yeah. just, like, picking and choosing. Well, you always, but that's the thing. As long as you go with a few people, you have three or four people, it doesn't matter that you order the whole menu. It's all going to get eaten. Well, and isn't that, isn't that, whether it's chefs or barbecue people, like, isn't that the, the, to me, that's the height of eating is like not everyone gets their own plate. It's yeah. just like, let's get a bunch of stuff. Everyone gets to try it. And, you know, as COVID safe as we can be, but like, like let's stick our fingers in each other's food a little bit too. Yeah, absolutely. I'm 100% down with everybody sharing everything and nobody just ordering their own dish. Because that makes it boring and you don't get to try much. If I go to a restaurant, I want to try what they're doing. I don't necessarily want to eat even half a portion of what they give, but I want to try every single thing. Like if I can, I mean, now some places the menus are huge and you can't do that, right. but yeah. I, and well, and for, you know, for pe- people like us who eat a lot, it's like there, sometimes all you need is a bite. Sometimes yeah. you just want to try every Absolutely. little thing. Absolutely. I don't necessarily care about taking more than a bite of much stuff that I try, but I always want to try a bite of it. Cause it helps you. Kn- the more times you try it, the more you can get the flavor profiles down. It's just about tasting everything and all the love that's put into the food that you're eating. Well, and and, uh, and Leroy and Lewis is they they just really. I have cooked a lot of the things that they make, like that burger. I can get about eighty five percent as good as their burger, but they yeah. still there's just something about you know it's like I'm I'm probably. You know, I, I've I've tried to smoke and then fry wings. I'm terrible at frying wings. I'm really good at smoking them. I don't know why. I'm just like the frying part. I always screw up. But uh, just 
it, it's also fun to go to these places and try these things and then try to recreate it at home. Yeah. And however good or bad it does come out. You're like, like even the, the barbacoa, I've tried to do it like Leroy and Lewis and I get close, but I'm just like, they're just so much better at it. It's, it's yeah. crazy. Well, I mean, it's repetition. You get better at the more you do something. So yeah, the, I mean, and the more you replicate it at home, the higher the percentage is going to be to getting towards their product. But the thing is, at the same time, they're still doing it every day. So theirs is just getting a little bit yeah. better and a little bit better every day. It's it's kind of why I'm pushing myself this year to do even more video, more podcasts, more everything. Yeah. Because I just want to I want to do so many reps that this show becomes something that everyone likes to watch, not just barbecue people, not just Texans. Yeah. You know, I want. Uh, over the pandemic, the podcast has blown up in Slovenia. I was on like the top nice. 100 Apple podcast food. That's awesome. Arts. Yeah. In Slovenia. And it's like, Dude, let's go. Just become the barbecue Joe Rogan. Like, <laughs> yes. Hey, you know, your, <laughs> your episode 152 of uh, <laughs> the best barbecue experience. <laughs> well, and, uh, you know, I uh, through some very good friends that have now moved from L.A., I got to actually meet him quickly and the first thing he was like you're a barbecue guy how's terry blacks <laughs> <laughs> he, i mean like it's good it's, yeah it's really yeah. good yeah it's it's a it's a factory it's well done they just pump pump it out um and then i kind of made fun of him because when he first moved here he was eating at this like weird food truck like way in the middle of nowhere on b caves yeah and i was like bro we got to get you some better barbecue <laughs> yeah i know uh so you know awesome. i i don't see him being on my show or me being on him, his show anytime <laughs> soon, but I definitely, uh, I hope to interact with him at least once a year. Yeah. That, that's my goal. I just hope to interact with him once in my life. Yeah, that's right? awesome. Listen, man, you're, you'll be, uh, I'm going to see the, I'm going to see some of his friends, uh, tonight at their comedy show. So I'll be talking up everything you're doing and, and reminding them because a bunch of them moved, uh, to downtown from LA. Nice. So they're in downtown Heck Austin. Yeah. So that, they're not far away. Yeah, that's not far at all. Yeah. So I'm hoping to get I'm I'm hoping to take this comedy scene and these entertainers that I've met and pair them with all the great barbecue in this town and just yeah. have a party. Well, I mean, shit, comedy and good food goes well together, huh? Hell yeah. I, yeah, I'm going to be making I'm I'm going to be running the smoker today and making them some chicken and some stuff for tacos tonight. Oh, um, nice. Feeding them in the green room. But, uh, yeah, and a bunch of them love Matt's El Rancho, which I was like, it's good, but, like, yeah. let's let's get you to some other good places on South Lamar, and now you're here. So it's like, it's oh, my God, it's going to be such a party having you right here, dude. <laughs> Bring it on. Let's do it. We'll have to do another episode in, like, three months when you're, like, really embedded in here, and, and yeah. the, that nice vinyl wrap's a little dirtier. <laughs> you got the one of the coolest vinyl wraps on your truck. Thanks. I appreciate that. I really like how it came out. It was, and it was the first strap too. There was no rewraps or anything. Those guys did a great job. When I was looking at it, did they like pull the screws out or yeah, they, they like, they pulled out every single one of those screws and then re put them back in. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, but that's so nice. Like I, I just, I've seen so many dumb logos and just badly made things. And it's cool to see not just your initials, but like really high quality flames and just yeah just the the artwork is i was just really happy when you posted that i was like oh shit this guy's got like a really nice wrap job on his truck sick yeah it, it looks awesome i like it a lot and uh are you planning on getting more smokers you've got one what 500 gallon now yeah um yeah i'm planning on getting more smokers very soon um still working out all the details for those but Hopefully in the next couple of months, there'll be another one out there. Yeah, no rush. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, maybe, uh, you know, it's going to be, I guess you don't really have cars pulling in where you're at. So no. you could put a thousand gallon, you can put whatever you want back yeah. there. I, I, there's a lot of room for stuff still back there. Is it fun every day just to kind of like, like, do you spend more of your time thinking about like day to day stuff or are you like thinking about vision also every day? Um, well, my brain always goes like a million miles an hour. Hell yeah. So it's usually all over the place about both. Like my, 
But I mean, uh, the good thing is I have Cody here who handles most of the like day to day stuff. That's not like the barbecue cooking. I mean, he's even he's starting doing all that. Like he's doing he's doing the brisket cook today and stuff. So um, I'm hoping to soon be able to kind of take myself a little bit out of the day to day of this so that whenever the second truck comes, I can immerse from the day to day of that and they'll be parked right next to each other. So I can still be doing both. But then I'm always forward thinking like it's always about what's happening in a few months also on top of what's happening right now. Well, and, and it sounds like you've made a, a beautiful partnership with the, the owners here and they're, uh, you know, it's like, I, I, I've never even, I think maybe we ran into one as we were about to start this, but yes. it's like, it's cool to see, you know, you're working with this group, but you're also, it's not like they're checking on you every day or really worried about it. They know you're going to knock it out of the park. Yeah, exactly. And so the one that you actually ran into at the beginning of this, uh, both of the owners here, their names are Matt. It's Matt Carter and Matt Davis. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. And so Matt Carter, the one that we ran into right at the beginning of the show, he's also one of the owners of Eastside Tavern. And that's kind of how I had the in here. Oh, nice. Yeah. And so, yeah. And I mean, it's, it's cool. It, it, Austin is, Austin becomes a small town very fast. I'm yeah. sure even faster. Oh yeah, for you. absolutely. It's like, and especially in the service industry and the restaurant and bar world and stuff, everything's everyone's so intertwined. Everyone's worked all over town, and so you get a lot of mutual friends at different places, and it's awesome. Well, and I learned uh, from you know before COVID, I was doing a lot of marketing for restaurants and things, and and I was learning about that there are there are people you know where it's like there's three guys that own this place, but then one of them owns two other places and then one of them owns two other places and you know there's like these like investor stacks and oh yeah there's so much like there's so much money going around and there's so much there's so many people willing to invest in things i think that's why we have such a good food scene and that's one of the reasons i can't believe that there's two starbucks within a mile of my house and i want to burn them down (laughs) yeah it's frustrating yeah but i mean Starbucks is like Rudy's, man. They do it all really well. They, they, they do it. It's consistent. You know exactly yeah. what you're getting. I feel the same about Starbucks as I do about Rudy's. It's, it's like, like if, if, but at the same time, it's like, I don't know. If there wasn't a choice, you know, Starbucks isn't the worst option. But yeah, it's no. like there's 10 good coffee shops oh, within yeah. a mile of my house. When especially, especially in a town like Austin, it's not necessary. But like in smaller towns where there's not that much good right. coffee, Starbucks probably is the best coffee in a lot of towns. I like how you call Austin a town too. That makes me really happy. <laughs> <laughs> it just is. It's still a town. Like I, until until you can live downtown, not need a car, and also be able to get your groceries like from a corner store. Yeah. To me, it's like not a city. Yeah. I mean, Austin's a town. Like I don't know. And South Austin especially still feels like a town. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, I live, like, a mile from here, too. So, like, this part of South Austin is where I do most of my day-to-day stuff. Yeah. And, and I mean, you really – you got such a great spot. And it's just it's just too much fun. Like, I can walk here. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this is, it's probably this, dangerous. Yeah. I don't care, dude. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll burn a few calories walking to Paris. <laughs> Uh, well, so one of the last things, uh, I always ask everyone is like, what's your message to the enthusiasts, the barbecue people, the barbecue nerds out there that, uh, that want to elevate their barbecue? I mean, don't be afraid to fuck up some meat. Like if you, if you mess it up, just do it again. Like, and don't do the same thing you did, but don't change more than one variable at a time. Because if you change more than one variable at a time, you will never know which variable changed and improved or made it worse. Right. Like if you if you add more salt and turn up the heat. Yeah. You don't know which one of those things worked better. Yeah, exactly. So that's why, and especially in sausage making, never change more than one variable. And that's very specific, right? Yes. Like weights and everything. Yeah. Now you said that that's probably your favorite thing right is making the sausage i love making sausage yeah why is that it's just it's almost therapeutic like grind it then you have to and it's like it's meticulous and therapeutic because 
everything you want everything to be as exact as possible you have to make sure your emulsification is proper you have to make sure it's going to case right whenever you make your links you have to make sure they're the same size whenever it's like there's so much meticulous and and yet mindless at the same time that it's like so gratifying well it's mindless because you've done it so many times right yeah yeah it's definitely not mindless when you're learning how to do it <laughs> i've made sausage a few times and uh uh, I need to talk to you because I want to make bologna. I know that's a, a much bigger challenge. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you just need a Roboku. A big one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but do you, uh, is there like a, is it a challenge as far as, I always look at like, people say you can control when you grind your own meat, you can control how much fat is in it. But mm-hmm. is that is that actually like weighing them separately? Or yes. are you, so you're literally taking straight fat and then mix it because there's fat in the meat usually too right yeah i mean there's a little bit of intermuscular fat but like i use mostly brisket trim for the sausage for the lean meat in the sausage and so i mean there's not that much fat in it i mean yeah there's definitely some yeah it it, we'll we'll have to i'll have to come hang out while you're making sausage one day yeah you do it (laughs) because it's gonna be that that's just it's still kind of a it's a a beautiful uh mystery to me still you know I've watched it happen i've yeah. i've been at i was at uh Miller's once and they were doing they've got a huge machine and oh yeah home girls like the Miller's just, setup is awesome <laughs> they can make so many links in one minute it's insane I remember the first time I was back there with Dusty and he was showing it to me I was like like my mouth just dropped I was like wow the fact that you can and you can still make sure at every step of the process that it's really good even making it in that large scale with those great sausage machines that they make now. And they have the little hip button for when yeah. you're making the sausage, so you can use both hands. Uh, and I I think she's still there, but a young woman named Rachel was there. And, I mean, her forearms were – she had some awesome forearms just from <laughs> whipping. I mean, she – I don't know how many sausages they make a minute, but you saw. It's like – Yeah, it's, it's just insane. a factory back there. And the, the walk-in that you can, like, run carts through. and <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> dream setup. Well, Cade, uh, you know, until until you've got your giant walk-in cooler, we'll be keeping up and updating the, the world on CM Smokehouse and all the delicious food uh, that's here over at Bolden Acres on South Lamar. Uh, and, uh, yeah, you got any last words for the, the people out there? No, I think I'm good. Thanks right, for having folks. me on. Yeah. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, a chef, a barbecue guy, you really uh, – your, your knowledge is so rounded out. I'm so excited to eat lots of your food and see more and more of what you're doing. Oh, yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Well, until next time, stay tuned for more Best Barbecue. Hey, they come in and meet, man. Y'all don't see me eat, man. Hit on the meat, man. Y'all don't see me eat, man. I got jaws like a bear trap, a teeth like a razor. I made tack tongue with a sensitive taster. I was born out in Texas called the land of beef. Never catch a muscle greener, showing the hell that like a meat on the meat, man. Y'all to see me eat.